Hi, welcome to quiz number one, Earth Systems and Climate Change. Be sure to record all of your answers on your Scantron. Sam decided to compare the time it takes three different brands of milk to sour. He left container of country fresh milk at 35 degrees Fahrenheit, a container of moo milk at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and a container of ever fresh milk at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. All of the milk had the same expiration date and were in the same size container. Sam recorded the following results. Country Fresh at 35 degrees took 8 days. Moo Milk at 45 degrees took 4 days to sour. And Ever Fresh at 55 degrees took 1 day to sour. Number 1. The major mistake Sam made in designing his experiment was A. Using too many brands of milk. B. Using a different temperature for each brand of milk. C. Having the same size container for each brand. D. All of the above. Or E. None of the above. Number two. The dependent variable in this experiment is A. The brands of milk. B. The temperature of the milk. C. The time it took the milk to go sour. D, the size of the container of milk, or E, none of the above. Number three, a controlled variable in this experiment is the brands of milk, A, B, the temperature of the milk, C, the time it took the milk to go sour, D, the size of the container of milk, or E, all of the above. Use the following answers for questions four through 10. Some answers may be used more than once, others not at all. Some questions may have more than one correct answer. If you read this, draw a jack-o'-lantern next to your name on your answer sheet. So answer A if you think it's hydrosphere, B if you think it's atmosphere, C for biosphere, or D for geosphere. Number four, all water is included in this sphere. Number five, plants and animals make up this sphere. Number six, a glacier could erode away this sphere. Number seven, nitrogen gas makes up almost 80% of this sphere. Number eight, this sphere is responsible for protecting Earth from sun's radiation. Number nine, these two spheres interact closely to create the weather. And number 10, the movement of tectonic plates in this sphere results in volcanic activity and earthquakes. We're going to use the information in the passage above to answer questions 11 through 14. How will climate change affect the Great Lakes region? For 30 million Americans and Canadians who live in the Great Lakes Basin, climate change is a real threat to the home of 84% of North America's surface freshwater. One result of rising temperatures is more severe and extreme weather events. Heavier storms are projected to increase in frequency, and the Great Lakes region is predicted to experience larger increases in total precipitation than most other parts of North America. With higher intensity storms comes an increased er risk for erosion due to the intense rain and flooding. Snow and ice levels on the Great Lakes will likely continue to decline. Ice cover on the Great Lakes has huge impacts on the area's precipitation. With less ice, the more exposed water, water supplies moisture to the atmosphere above, increasing lake effect precipitation for both rain and snow. More rain in the future over the Great Lakes Basin means more runoff of fertilizers from the land and sewer discharge into the lakes. 
This increases the occurrence of harmful algal blooms, which can lead to massive fish kills. The resulting poor water quality can prove dangerous for humans too with toxic drinking water and beach closures. With increasing lake temperatures, cold water fish populations in the Great Lakes are predicted to decline while warm water fish populations surge. Increasing evaporation rates due to warming air temperatures will decrease the wetland area, putting stress on regional animals. Many species will eventually need to migrate north to adapt to rising temperatures. Number 11 asks, how is the geosphere affected by climate change in the Great Lakes region? A. Harmful algal blooms lead to massive fish kills. B. A decrease in wetland areas force species to migrate north to adapt. C. Intense rain and flooding causes erosion and destroys shorelines. Or D. Less ice cover can cause more lake effect precipitation. Number 12. How could the biosphere in the Great Lakes region be affected by climate change? A. Harmful algal blooms lead to massive fish kills. B. Warmer air temperature causes more extreme weather events. C. Intense rain and flooding causes erosion and destroys shorelines. D. Less ice cover can cause more lake effect precipitation. Number 13, which would best represent the interactions involved with the following statement? Runoff of fertilizers from the land and sewer discharge into the lakes, which increases the occurrence of harmful algal blooms and kills fish. Is it A, atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere? B, geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere? C, atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, or D, geosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere. Number 14, which two spheres are involved with the following statement? With less ice, the more exposed water supplies moisture to the atmosphere above, increasing lake effect precipitation, both rain and snow. Is it A, atmosphere and hydrosphere, B, hydrosphere and geosphere, C, atmosphere and biosphere, or D, hydrosphere and biosphere. Number 15. When large amounts of carbon are accumulated and stored over time, such as in the ocean or in plants, it is called a carbon sink. We are currently concerned that the carbon sources are out of balance with carbon sinks. If the sources provide more CO2 in the atmosphere than the sinks can remove, what is a likely result? A, an increase in global temperatures. B, a decrease in global temperatures. C, no changes in global temperatures. Or D, severe fluctuations in global temperatures. Number 16, which statement best supports your answer for question 10? Is it A, carbon dioxide reflects sunlight causing temperatures to decrease? B, carbon dioxide has no effect on temperatures? C, carbon dioxide absorbs heat from the earth causing temperatures to increase? Or D, carbon dioxide would cycle quickly causing fluctuations in global temperatures. Number 17, how would cutting down trees possibly contribute to global warming? Is it A, trees absorb sun's energy without radiating it back into the atmosphere? B, trees soak up carbon dioxide from the air through photosynthesis? Or is it C, trees provide shade, which counteracts global warming? Or D, trees, gain, trees drain greenhouse gases from soil? Part two coming next.